Uh, to begin a hearing like this, uh, we need to have a statement read by the superintendent at the beginning. The purpose of this public hearing is for the Stillwater Area School Board to listen to public comment regarding the proposal to close Oak Park Elementary, Withrow Elementary, and Marine Elementary Schools. The administrative team is proposing the closing of these schools for the following reasons. Declining enrollment, we are a district of 8,300 students built for 10,000 students. We want to provide equitable learning opportunities for all students across the school district. We need to address the future capacity concerns that are a result of the grade configuration and declining enrollment capture rate, and to provide systemic alignment and allocation of human and financial resources that will position our school district for the future. At the presentation of the bold plan on January 7th, the district officials showed us the above map and told us that the white areas represented areas of no growth and that the county would actually experience a 5.2% decline in growth in population by 2040, based on the council's projections. But when I looked at the Met Council report on the same page as a white and blue map, there's a red map showing significant growth in the entire district. And 45 to 90% growth in the northern part of the district. It turns out the 5.2% number they've been using actually refers to a small decline in average people per house. Um, I did get confirmation from the uh, Met Council on this. It appears district officials misunderstood this data when they presented it. I sent my concerns about this to the board Monday night. And I have some new information as of today. After talking with the Met Council today, I learned that they were contacted yesterday with a request for some detailed demographic information on the school district. This information was requested by Dr. Robert McDowell of the Bold team. To recap for you, I sent the board members my concerns about the demographic data at 5 p.m. on Monday. Tuesday morning, one of the main architects of the bold plan is then calling and emailing the Met Council for detailed demographic info on our district regarding projected population and households. Over the years, there have been, been many misconceptions about Withrow and its success. We have invited district staff, administrators, and board members to come and see what we're about and why we work so well. Those that do see the special place our school is, but unfortunately, many have not taken us up on our invitation, so I'd like to address some of these misconceptions. Number one is that our class sizes are small. When I started in 2010, our enrollment was approximately 130 students. The first grade class was only 13 students, but it was a true anomaly. When that same class moved on to junior high last year, it had grown to 21. Our enrollment has increased every year in every grade, and our classes all fall well within the district ranges, with most of our classes over 25. Uh, initiative, the district has provided a savings estimate of $1.2 million, with a $1 million in operational savings from closing the buildings, $120,000 in reduction of uh, full-time employees, $148,000 reduction in support staff. However, they have not accounted for the added cost to move the 700 kids to the remaining elementary schools. They haven't accounted for loss of students to other educational options, and have not accounted for costs to keep Oak Park open as that building is still going to be uh, $1.2 million savings estimate is flawed. They have not accounted for all costs associated with, this, uh, with the closures, and there's going to be a net loss unless significant teacher layoffs are made to attend these schools. So here's the northern part of the district. What you'll see next is really where the 43% that, that Jay speaks of comes from. It comes from the northwest area of the district. So if we close these schools, what you'll see next is we're going to have a compression moving towards the southern part of the district. Now you're, we're going to be encouraging these families to have to drive all the way down into town after school activities and pick up. It, it significantly changes the dynamic of the family environment, especially if they have to go back into town later in the evening for other activities. And here's the other challenge with it. Well, you have to take your kids towards town to go to work, to, to go to school. In order to go to work, many of these families who have come out to this area have to go back towards the Twin Cities to go to work. So it's not whether we want to send our kids to Stillwater. It's whether, the problem is we, a lot of families can't continue to if they're enroll, open enrolling into the district. Yes. However, 30 years of national education literature proves that school consolidation does not result in increased access to student resources or better education opportunities. 
In fact, the research shows that closing smaller schools and creating fewer but larger schools results in decreased academic performance and student achievement, lower standardized test scores, lower college admissions, decreased parent involvement, higher rates of discipline problems like bullying and violence, increased truancy and substance abuse, and higher dropout rates or problems. For example, in 2011, in Pleasant Valley, California, school administrators predicted a cost savings of $700,000 through um, closing schools, but ended up losing $2.4 million when hundreds of parents pulled their students from the district within months. After searching through thousands of education journals and research studies, I have failed to find even one example where a district consolidated its highest performing schools and had any positive outcomes. There is no evidence to support Bold's proposed benefits. 